Hey, I'm Gina Fernandez. I'm an Extension Specialist with North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. Today we are at Farrell's Creek Farm to learn about blackberry pruning. First, I want to talk about a couple of things. The tools that you will need for blackberry pruning. You need a good pair of gloves, a pruners. I like this pruners right here. It's a Felco. It uh, has a nice sharp blade, fairly new, cuts really good clean cuts, and fits well in my hand. And because they're blackberries, they have fairly wide circumference at the base, we also like to have a loppers. So first of all, I want to talk to you about why you want to prune. What are the goals of pruning? You want to increase your yield. Everybody wants more berries. You want to increase the quality of that fruit, and you want to make it easier for you to harvest that fruit once it's time for harvest to begin. So the first objective is to remove old and dead canes, ones that have diseases and ones that have insect damage to them. The second objective is to open up the canopy in order to let light penetration to get into that canopy, allow the leaves to photosynthesize and send those sugars to those developing fruit. And the third objective is to maximize your yield. We wanna talk about the growth habit of the blackberry plant before we start pruning. The blackberry plant is actually a perennial plant. Once you plant it, it will last eight to 10 years. However, the above ground portion of the plant is biennial. So what that means is the first year, you will have primocanes emerge from the crown and they remain vegetative, meaning they do not produce the fruit. Those primocanes will go through the winter and in the second year, they will become the floricanes and bear the fruit. After the fruit is produced on those floricanes, those canes die or senesce and they can be removed from the plant. You will also have primocanes emerging from the crown. So you'll have both primocanes and floricanes present in the second year. So here is a blackberry plant before we go ahead and prune it in the winter time. Usually you wanna leave about three to eight main canes. These are the three main canes right here. You can see one right here, one right here, and one right here. So we've already reduced this plant down to three main canes. Then we want to go ahead and remove laterals. These are the laterals. You can see the branching off of the main canes here. All these long secondary canes, we call those laterals. And we want to reduce those laterals so there's not as much crossing over and evenly distribute them within this canopy space here. Usually you want them somewhere between 12 and 16 or 18 inches each. We also want to inspect the plant to see if there's any insect or disease damage. Right here, I see a little bit of uh, cane blight. This is at the tip of the canes. This occurred last summer, and we would go ahead and remove that cane blight below the area where the damage occurred. And you make sure that the damage isn't here in the cane itself. We also look at the canes to see if we see any insect damage. These canes look pretty clean. I don't see any of the typical swelling that you would see with gulls, so we're not gonna prune out any of them. Gulls would be a swelling in the cane itself, kind of a roundish ball that you would see. And if you would cut it open, you could see either larvae or some sort of damage, some browning or some frass left behind. So one of the first things you wanna do is remove anything below the bottom wire. So all these laterals that are below this wire right here, we don't want the fruit too low because it will just get heavy and fall to the ground. So we go ahead and remove those laterals. And you can see already how that's starting to open up that lower canopy. The other thing you want to keep, it, keep in mind is that you don't want to prune too late in the winter or early spring because these buds will start to swell. And if you start pulling out those canes, you might rub off some of these buds. So now is the time to do it before they start swelling. All right. So sometimes you don't want to prune actually all the canes or the laterals below that bottom wire. Right here, for example, are a couple of canes that are going in this direction. So we really want to fill in this whole canopy from plant to plant. So I'm going to leave these two canes right here to fill in that space. And now I'm going to just start pruning those laterals back to 12 to 18 inches. Sometimes it helps to have one person on one side of the row and another person on the other side of the row to help remove some of those canes that are a little bit harder to reach from both sides. Okay, so this looks pretty good. This one's still long. 
And now we're going to tie up those canes to the wires. And I use just some plain old flagging tape here, nothing fancy. This grower has something we call a tea trellis where we have this branching of two lateral uh, cross arms, one lower and one higher. And what we want to do is tie canes equally to one side and to the other side. And this one has an extra support wire in the middle. So that one is supported by that. We're just going to leave that one there. This one we're going to tie to the tip, help anchor it up on the top. This one will tie over on this side. All right, so that's basically what you do. No plant is exactly cooperative, uh, but you want to see how we have this here. We have the canes, canopy open right here. We have lots of, a lot of potential for sunlight penetrating down into the canopy here. And the laterals are shortened. Half of the main canes are one side and the other half are on the other side. So we have this nice sort of V forming right there. And next year, the primocanes, the new canes, will emerge from the, from the ground and they will, for the most part, grow up through the middle of this canopy. If you follow all these steps and keep those objectives in mind, you will have plenty of blackberries for harvesting next summer. For further information, go to the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Blackberry and Raspberry Portal. You can find the Blackberry Production Guide there, resources for controlling insects and pests, and also there are links to the Team Rubus blog. Thank you for watching this video. If you need more information, please contact me at North Carolina State University.